story time. Hey guys, it's Crystal Lowe, and today I'm going to be doing a story time. I haven't done a story time in a long time, I believe. I think it's been a few years, but the last story time that I did was a video about being shipped to Nigeria at the age of 14. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out. I'll leave it in the description bar below. So most of you guys might know that I've had like a very long, long, not that long, but I've had a pretty good history and past of like just serial dating and just like dating people. Um, even after I found the Lord, I was kind of like, oh, I want a Christian man, like, yeah. And that's how I fell into this conundrum where this story comes from, okay? So I have stories for days, so don't judge. Um, I was too once foolish and unseasoned in the Lord, even though I was saved at this point in my life. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this story time. Girl, 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 let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened. So I was about one year into my walk in Christ and I had just recently gone out of a not so God glorifying relationship. And I was on Twitter one day trying to do this giveaway for um, having made a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel. And I had Christian books for women and Christian books for men that I wanted to give away, right? So I noticed that the Christian books for women were like getting more engagement and people were actually like, you know, entering to win those. But I was like getting no feedback from the Christian books for men. And I was like, okay, I, I don't need them. Like, can somebody win these books that I, you know, you know, that I bought with my own money, okay? Girls was not, you know, rolling in dough at that point in her life. So I was like, look, someone go take these books, okay? Someone go get these books. So anyways, I had reached out to the guy that was like, he's in ministry, surely he knows someone that would like want these books or need them or whatever. And um, he was like, oh yeah, like I'll take the books. So I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. That's cool, like we could, that works with me. I believe it was via Twitter that he told me about a dream that he had about a woman and this and that and all this stuff. And that's what he was telling me, you know, the dream um, via Twitter and like in like text. I was like, oh, that's super cool. Like cool that's super cool like I'm congratulations like I'm happy for you like you're gonna get married soon that's dope fam so after that um I think we, actually, we had exchanged numbers because I needed his number to I believe ship the um the books to him or something like that so we had exchanged numbers and by that time he was like you know texting me like you know um by a phone and I was totally okay with it because I was like oh yeah cool 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 like we're just friends it's fine and as time went on, um, I think the first com conversation that we actually had was that he was like, hey, remember that dream I told you about with the girl that I saw, the vision that I had? I'm like, yeah, 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 what's, like, what's popping? He was like, that girl was you. And basically, I believe that God is telling me that you're my wife. Like, I believe God told me that you're my wife. And I'm just like, ooh, hold on, hold, uh, uh, hold on, okay, because God didn't tell me that. <laughs> But anyways, um, so I went ahead and was like, hey, you know, um, can I like pray about this or like see God for myself because this just kind of sounds like a lot right now. You know, I just got out of a relationship that was supposed to lead to marriage and now we're in this one that's like, you talking about marriage already? I don't, I don't even know you like that. You don't even live in the same state as me. So this is just like a lot to take in. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm praying about it, seeking God about it and like, I am becoming so obsessed with like wanting a sign from God and almost like an okay from God because I kind of do start to grow feelings for this guy and I'm like okay like he's a man of God, he has a ministry, he loves the Lord, like what else could a girl ask for, right? A, a woman of God asked for at least, I don't know. So I'm like you know wanting God to like give me the confirmation but how many of us know of a thing called the self-fulfilling prophecy or better yet the confirmation bias. So. Um, confirmation bias just means that we're going to look for everything that's going to confirm what we want to already confirm. And then the self-fulfilling prophecy basically just means that because we think something and believe something, we're eventually going to make it come to pass. It's like a natural way of behaving to bring about a certain like response or end result in a sense. So um, that's kind of what happened, you know? I was so fixated on this idea of, um, you know, getting the confirmation from God that this person was my husband, that I ended up having a dream about it. And honestly, you know, in this dream, it it looked like him, but 
and he was a chocolate man and my now husband is a chocolate man so maybe it was my actual like now husband you know but anyways um it was just kind of like you know still very ambiguous like mm, could have been could have couldn't have been him but it's gonna be him I'm about to make him my man okay um just out of the fact that I want a Christian man and you know why don't you just maybe even rush God's plan or God's timing in that in that certain season of life but gave him the gave the guy the okay and you know we were kind of on this like track to be married y'all like literally I was meeting with his mentors that you know lived where I lived that time we were planning to like meet eventually in person and I, I like told my mother I told my Nigerian mother that I want to marry somebody I never met the way she looked at me the way she just looked at me I was like oh, okay oh, okay <laughs> you just gonna look at me like you want to kill me like the thing is I don't even know where the boldness came from in my chest to now raise myself up and say I, I'm gonna marry somebody I never met before that God told him that I'm his wife and I have con God has confirmed it through my dream the way my mom was just looking at me okay that's that's her okay <laughs> oh, okay I'm surprised I wasn't buried a few years ago because yeah she just must have been the Lord must have given her some kind of special grace for me because yeah your girl was wild and okay so definitely on board for this marriage plan fully believing it um, and as time goes on I just get to like learn his character more I get to learn like you know the ins and outs of his personality and his faith and the fruits of his you know faith and I'm just not seeing it y'all it just ain't it so I'm just kind of like getting confused in all of it like why is this guy like so manipulative and so just mental and so just why can I ever meet his standard of who a Christian woman is supposed to be why is he forcing me to be someone that I'm not why is he making me feel less than when I can't do something that he wants to do and it was just really really getting rough at this point like if I wasn't casting out demons, if I wasn't speaking in tongues, if I wasn't like, you know, walking in one of the gifts of the spirit, then he was like not pleased with me. So in a sense, he kind of blurred the lines of like me living for the glory of God. And in a sense, I was now living for the glory of him. And I just kind of felt so like I'll never be up to his standards. And I don't know about you, but when it comes to us and our relationship with God, we fully know that we are loved by God and there's grace for us and for our mistakes and our shortcomings. But with the man, that's so different. It's like their bar, this is where we are. This is their bar and this is where we are. And we're just like striving to get here. And it's just exhausting. And it's just almost literally impossible. And that's how it felt. So after a certain point, you know, I was thinking that things were going to kind of go good. And I kind of felt like, okay, let's just make it work. Like, we're getting married. Like God said, we're, we're bound to this, right? Like, we can't, we can't break up. Like, <laughs> if we break up, then who are we going to marry? Because God said that you are my spouse. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I just want to laugh at myself real quick. But anyways, so we continue pushing on. And then eventually, I think one day he's like, hey, um, I just feel like God wants me to fast um, from from you, basically, from us, essentially, but from you, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, 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 cool. Take, take your time, homie. I'm gonna see you in about a week. You know, I'm gonna see you when I see you. Like this is gonna be great. And it was really hard for me because, of course, at that time we talked like every day, every night, all the time. We slept on the phone, which I don't advise as a dating couple. I just don't advise it but anyways um I did it but I don't advise it because of a lot of different factors that come when um, intimacy is built and how fast it's built but whatever that's a different kind of video or a different discussion but anyways um so I was like yeah sure 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 a week is fine or I was like five or seven days but I think it was about a week so after the week had been up um that time at midnight I was like wondering okay why hasn't he like reached out or like you know said anything this is really awkward so uh, the next morning I reached out and I was like hey you know the fast is over like yay fast is over we can talk now forever and he was like yeah I just really feel like this isn't for me like this relationship isn't for me and like I feel like God said I said God, God said what God is saying what to you now first God said I'm your wife now he's saying that you should leave me so is so God is confused 
So is it God that's confused now? God is, ah, uh, ah, uh, I was so bewildered, okay? I was lost. I was like, what kind of situationship, spiritual warfare is this? <laughs> what, what is it? So at that point, I was like, just done. I was like, yeah, get out of my phone. Get out of my life. I am so done. And I was so hurt because it felt like you used God to gain power and advantage over me. And then when you realized that it wasn't fitting for your own personal comfort, you disappeared or you like left the relationship or left the situation or whatever it is. So it was just really hurtful and um, I remember him like wanting me back but I was like God forbid I don't want again please keep your wahala to yourself Crystal wants to be happy and have joy so um, that's what I did we ended up ending for good I blocked him on most things and unblocked him then blocked him or whatever and um, I think I mean it was hard I cried a lot it was just kind of like <gasps> Like, I can laugh now at, like, my 21-year-old self or something like that. 21-ish. Yeah. Yeah, 21-year-old self. Because it's hilarious. Like, sis, it's not that deep. You will find love. You will find joy um, in life. Like, God is going to provide all that you can imagine. And it doesn't mean it didn't hurt. It just means that I didn't see the bigger picture in that moment. But, um, but yeah. So, it was really, really unfortunate um, I really did grow from that relationship. I think that I still kind of like deal with my, uh, like my, I, I think that I still deal with the tendency to be overly like, yeah, picky with things like what people say, what their intentions are because I have experienced a lot of like deceit through that relationship and I really do think that um, a lot of what was happening in that relationship was spiritual abuse. Um, so I came out feeling like, just who is God? Who am I? Am I a Christian? Do I like what does a Christian need to do to be a Christian? Like it was just like I was lost and confused part two, you know, and I feel like my relationship was like very legalistic. So like if you sneeze, it's kind of a sin. If you cough too hard, you might be going to hell. So it was just too much. And I had to like unlearn and then relearn and learn who God is and what love, grace, life, and relationship in him look like. So it took a minute and I, I think that I still have to also like reflect and like realize, you know, what the person did and how that can sometimes feed into how I can like perceive what people are doing in the now, you know? So um, I have gotten a lot of freedom through that. I would say that of course, you know, I am just a little bit more guarded sometimes when it comes to like, people and like God said or you know the Lord told me <laughs> the Lord needs to tell me too he needs to confirm it and he needs to match you know what's already happening or what his word says about me and over me and I really like it because you know I believe in the prophetic like don't get me wrong and I love that my church has like this little rule that we do where it's like prophesy about anything you want to but no dates no mates or no places so I cannot tell you God said that you need to go to India. I cannot tell you that you need to, on this day, April 19, 2020, you, nah, mm -mm. I cannot tell you this is who you're supposed to marry, that God told me this is who you're supposed to marry. Like, I can't tell you those things. And also it's like scripture tells us that we know in part and we prophesy in part, but it's only truly God who fully knows the bigger picture. And we only do these things in part because we are mere humans. We are legit like just people. So it's like, just understanding God's plan for all of this and understanding that he really is sovereign and good really needs to be our focus when we're trying to prophesy over someone and edify them and encourage them with our words, with the words that Christ is giving us to share with them. That's basically how that relationship ended. Um, after that relationship, I took a sabbatical from relationships. I was like, okay, God, it's just you and me at the top. I'm done. I'm gonna find myself in you, God. And that's what I did. I was like, yeah, I'm done. Like, I was like, swerve, swerve, Heisman. Like, I don't want any more trouble. Like, I just wanna love God. I just wanna graduate. I just wanna buy my, 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 my own business, you know? So that's what I did. And that's eventually what led up to leaving my now husband, um, where we were friends for a while. And then it 
kind of grew into a beautiful friendship and then beautiful engagement and then a beautiful God-fearing centered marriage. And that, my friends, is how this story ends. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this um, story time, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you comment below. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Share this video with someone that you feel has been hurt by a relationship with someone who used God's name in vain or used God's name deceitfully. So um, love you guys and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.